All right, check this out. This is an entire brake system. Um, it's off of a Ford Focus, but let's go over some stuff. Obviously here you got your front disc brakes, rotor, caliper, pads, some springs. Those are all gonna be mounted on a knuckle right here. This is where the strut would bolt up. Same on the other side. And then go into that uh, front caliper, we got this flex hose. That's coming off of a steel line. The steel line will go to some kind of bracket like this and they'll have a little horseshoe clip if we wanted to um, disconnect these. We could, it's a good idea to hold this and then loosen the fitting right here, but the, the clip does a decent job. And if you wanted to change the flex hose, you'd actually have to unthread the fitting and then pop the clip out. That would loosen it up. And then right here, it threads into the caliper. Here's our bleeder. These are bolts under these covers, but they're more like, we, we'll call those like a guide pin because it's a bolt, but it's also the slide for the caliper. Those need to be lubricated, right? And then um, in the back, got drums. The drums are mounted to a backing plate and a hub, which is kind of like a hub and wheel bearing assembly. Um, interestingly enough, these have a wheel speed sensor attached right to them. You can see the brake lines come up hard line straight into this part which is the wheel cylinder um, and we could pop this apart but at another time um, so the cool thing about this is it also has a master cylinder right here so the master cylinder is where the pressure will originate so like for example if I push the brake pedal brake pedal is gonna push this plunger piston right here and that is going to apply fluid pressure to both of these lines. And typically this one's the front line, typically this one's the rear line. So the front line is gonna to go to the front calipers. The rear line is gonna to go to the rear drums, well, wheel cylinders ultimately in the drums. Um, and then kind of a simple parking brake, mechanical. Pull up on the lever, lever pulls the cable, this is an equalizer to apply both rear shoes on the rear drums at the same uh, rate. So there's um, like a natural pivot that it'll do. Let's say that some of the shoes are a little more worn. As you can see, it's pulling this side a little more. So our left side has a little bit more, more uh, wear on the shoes, a little bit of a looser adjustment. Uh, and then that goes to the two cables. The two cables will go through the backing plate to an arm that will apply the shoes. So that's all mechanical. Um, and then if we um, pull this up, it's gonna actually turn on our brake light. Now I've gotta, I've gotta turn the car on right here. Now notice it got a lot louder, that's why I waited. This is a vacuum pump, but it essentially functions like an engine because it's building vacuum. So now this system's gonna work a little different. When I pull the parking brake, as soon as I unseat, there's a small switch in here. It'll be grounded, and that's gonna give us the red brake light. All right, so if that red brake light was stuck on, we would look to see maybe it's something in this wire shorted to ground. Right now there's no ground. I gave it ground, right? But on most cars, the parking brake light and the brake warning light are one. So if there was a defect in the hydraulic system, like low fluid level, and depending on how it works, maybe low fluid pressure, these would be one light. So you're not sure if it's the parking brake or the actual regular brake. So while we're on the subject, if we look right here, here's our master cylinder. This is the way you'd approach it on the car. If we look, there's a float and I just pulled the float out of the fluid so it makes it think that the fluid level's low. This is what you get with low fluid level. You get that warning light. So it could be low fluid level or it could actually be a short to ground in the harness or this float switch could actually be defective. You'd have to do a little bit more troubleshooting. And now that we have it running, let's take a look at some of our um, brake pressures. In fact, let's kind of turn off for a second. If I step on this pretty hard a few times, I'm depleting the vacuum right now because it's got quite a bit of assist. After several pumps, it's a hard pedal. 
If you look, if I step on this pretty hard, I can not even get 100 PSI. So these are piped into all four uh, brakes right now. So we don't have to hook up gauges. That's why this thing is really cool. So I push on this pretty hard. I'm literally just using the rod to press the master cylinder piston. And with, I'll even use my knee here. That's all I can make right there. That's it. So that's pretty low. Now you can see with it released, they'll turn. With it applied, they'll stop. But that's not really good on a 4,000 pound car. So we need a little more assist. So when I start this, once again, the engine is running. This engine sends vacuum to the brake booster. The brake booster is going to provide our assist. So now when I step on this, check it out. You know, I can get quite a bit more pressure. That's because this booster is using 20 inches of mercury on a large disc to give me hundreds of pounds of force. Now, if you look when I apply this, front is going to go to 400, rear is going to go to 400 slowly. But if I keep applying, you're going to notice the rear is going to start to fall off and the front is going way up. You notice the rear is at about 600 and the front's over 1,000. That's because this has proportioning. So there's proportioning valves. They're separate in this particular design. But this proportioning valve is going to allow pressure to continue to rise for the front, while this proportioning valve is going to limit pressure to the rear because under heavy braking, all your weight's on the front. You have less weight on the rear, so we don't want a lot of brake force. That's going to lock up the rear tires and put you into a skid. So this one's really cool because it has that feature built in, and you can kind of see how it works. And then if we were to have, um, let's say, some sort of a malfunction, let's say, like, uh, even we'll start with the brake lights are out. How are the brake lights triggered? Well, the brake lights are triggered by this brake light switch. So I could actually trigger the brake lights if I wiggled this just enough. But if I depress the pedal, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... It looks like it's opening the switch, but that's actually what closes the switch right there. And you see the lights come on. So if you need to troubleshoot brake lights, you're going to go look for that switch. You could check the adjustment. If the adjustment was too tight, the brake lights would be on all the time. If the adjustment was too loose, your brake lights might not come on until the pedal's all the way down, or maybe not at all. So it's a very interesting system. Now let's do another test. Let's just say that we had, for some reason, a loss of vacuum. Now our engine is making vacuum, but it's not making it to the booster. At first, this is gonna work. See, I've got good pressure there. One, I got two. I got maybe one and a half pumps, and now you'll notice it's it's depleted. And that's because this had an amount of vacuum built up, and this vacuum has a, this booster has a check valve, and the check valve's job is to allow only air to leave. So if I hook it back up, this will charge up the brakes, the brake booster again, and now I get all my good assist. But if I, let's say, the engine stalls, I should get another couple pumps, but let's just say this check valve is bad. Watch when I pull this out. Boom. The vacuum's depleted. I would instantly get a hard pedal and, and no assist, and that's gonna be a big problem for someone. Let's say they get in an accident and the engine dies. They need at least, you know, two to three good pedal pumps of good brake assist before the pedal gets hard and they lose assist. And that's the reason we have a check valve here. So if you were to have a vehicle and um, you wanted to do a safety check, you'd basically start it, build up the vacuum, turn it off. You could wait, like let's say five minutes, step on the pedal and you should still get good assist. Now you won't have the gauges, but you'll feel the pedal go down. That's good assist. If you were to turn it off and wait, let's say five minutes and the pedal were to be immediately hard, that's telling you that this is leaking vacuum, and most likely it's probably going to be that check valve. Those are the most common um, failure points. So it gives you a good overview. Um, I may do some more with this, but but um, for now, hopefully this helps you understand the system.